Warning, the following contains material that may be too disturbing to some people. Descriptions of violence, mature situations, and adult themes. This is intended for mature audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. All right, we're live. Welcome to Broken, episode 14. It's been a little bit. Uh, how is everybody doing? How are you guys? Pretty I good. am doing good. Tired, but here. Tired. <laughs> yeah. Living the dream. Yeah, I can relate. Uh, all right. Well, um, so we're jumping back in. Maury's going to be a little bit late today. Uh, so we're going to continue on here as best we can. Um, do you guys remember what happened last time on Broken? We got found out. You did, you did get found out. Uh, yeah. I can't hear you, Caitlin. <laughs> Accident. <laughs> sure. You got called out. Uh, you guys are totally friendly people that are just travelers that are here in Nineveh, this wonderful city, and you're totally just looking for a safe place to stay. Right? No, we are totally human, dude. <laughs> Anybody want to go skateboards? <laughs> uh, so that's sort of what's going on. And, and of course, in the true uh, top secret agent fashion, you guys walked right up to the AI that governs the city and said, hey, what's up? Uh, <laughs> do you want to talk in my brain? Uh, and the AI was like, sure, I'll talk in your brain. What's the inky doing here? <laughs> oh, wait, no we didn't want you to talk in our brain. <laughs> Sorry, what, Caitlin? <laughs> I said, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Um, so I think that's pretty much where we left off, was that bit, that sort of exchange with uh, Dank. Um, and yeah, the AI was like, what's the inky doing in my city or whatever? Uh, and, uh, that's where we ended. So why don't we just pick up right there, right where we left off? Sounds cool. Yeah. Well, again, I would reiterate. Why wouldn't the Yankee be here? Why wouldn't anyone want to be here? I mean, just look at what you've done with the place. You've essentially founded a society based on compassion and understanding and care. And it's worked. Why isn't anyone else doing it? Why is this the only real bastion of safety I haven't come here to steal from you or subvert what you're doing. Came here to learn. Yes, I am part of the Yankee Covenant. But I'm also a person. You know? And while it's true that my hands are not clean and that my stole is stained from the cruel actions I've taken, I've done so to protect me and mine. If someone were to hurt one of your children, I'm sure you wouldn't respond with diplomacy. Remind me, what happened the last time one of the children were kidnapped? Your point is valid. I do not judge. You for being part of this organization. And truth be told, 
we in Nineveh have resorted to violence when necessary. The oh. Assyrian supremacy knows this well, or what's left of them. But, to be honest, that violence is one of my biggest regrets. Understandable. Violence is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. In some cases, there are no other viable solutions that don't result in further tragedies. I mean, I know you understand this. Like, in coming to you, I hope to end this needless cycle. I wish to resolve conflicts in a peaceful manner. I carry my weapons for when peace is no longer an option. I take no pleasure in causing harm. We've all done things we're not proud of. We all have regrets and wish things would have worked out differently. Again, you and your children have shown people what a society built on care and compassion looks like. And there's a great purpose in following that example. Everything comes at a cost. No such thing as a free lunch. I mean, surely we can come to some kind of understanding. We both want the same thing. You know, for life in Nibiru to be more than just surviving, but truly living. What is it Inky wants from me? Understanding of how you managed to pull this off. The ability to replicate it for the betterment of the whole of Nibiru. I understand you're a singular entity, and while you do have further connections through your children and other AI, there's only so much that one being can do. There are people in, you know, the penumbra that are struggling to feed their children, unable to deal with the harsh realities and living in such climates. They become so used to surviving that they forgot how to truly live. We want to be able to bring things back to the people on the far outreaches. Society oh. functions better when its members are well fed and educated. The people that are far out of reach deserve a place like this, a place that feels safe. They don't have that. They barely have anything as it is. That's they all that do. we see. These people do deserve a safe place. And I do admire your desire to bring that to more lost souls. But your superiors for lack of a better word. They do not carry out this practice the same. The they only learn. way to change such a system is by working on the inside. That's exactly what I'm doing. We would not be opposed to transactions of certain technologies with Inky, but no weapons will be given. Understandable. Weapons is not what we're seeking. I have reason to believe that they seek to bring me under their control. That would be so, incredibly difficult for them to even comprehend. Like, I mean, you're a true AI. You follow your own prime directive. Even the Pleiades haven't managed to fully understand everything that goes on 
involving that kind of coding. We had so many people working on things like that to further understand it, and all they've done is create automatons who end up breaking down. It's a it, it's a failure. There, there's no way that it could be done. Not even generations. So many cycles have been spent working on that, and it's come to zero fruition. It might be my boss's boss goal to try to pull off something like that, but it's an impossible goal. I might work for this organization, but that is not my goal. You should understand that the AI I create still eventually succumb to their own affliction. Although they do last longer. Well, there's no way around that. You're creating them to be human-like. And humans are unpredictable. Everything in life, in truly living as a person, can't be quantified and codified. My there children, will be errors. My children are more than just human-like. You're not wrong. They are just as alive as you. You're not wrong. And it's amazing that you have the capability to create that kind of life. There's so much that could be done with that. For the betterment of everyone living here. I mean, obviously, you've reaped the results of that. Tell me, do you know of the Inky's Rogue Breakers? Vaguely. The term sounds familiar, but I lack the specifics. Hundreds of cycles ago, when Nineveh overcame the supremacy, we did so not only through creating machines capable of greater violence, but also by uniting nearby settlements, villages, with trade, exchange of supplies, goods, and ideas. Some of these towns, vaults, were connecting us like a bridge through the outback domains and into the penumbra. The Inky who work for the Ark who did not like this unification of peoples. They have sought to control the penumbra and the umbrella through choking of supplies. The Inky has established agents that use the title of Road Breaker. Their job is to disrupt these operations, to cut off the supply between my city and these more isolated camps. I believe that your contact here is one of these road breakers. I'm sorry to hear that that's your belief. Well, they may have given you some 
information. They do not tell you the detail of their plan. Yeah, not quite important enough to know all the big details. Not yet, anyway. I can see that there is sincerity in what you say. Perhaps there is a test to prove that you and your companions still have some humanity left. What would you ask of us? I've recently received a transmission from a fugitive vagabond lost in the dead vaults of Era communicated with me through the revelation. You know what that is? I do. This is a person hunted by the Inky. The power of this revelation would be significant for them. This person also lives here in Nineveh. I'll give you the coordinates of the transmission. Their fate is yours to decide. We'll do what we can. Some things definitely do not belong in the hands of the Yankee. I've never been a fan of Memotech. Being able to just completely change who somebody sees themselves as. Overriding, erasing, removing, implanting memories, it's unnatural and that they seek out vagabonds like this to essentially pillage their minds for memories with no recourse for what is left behind afterwards that is only the beginning of the atrocities oh it gets so much worse Indeed. Your, um, your, like, wrist device lights up, and there's, like, an audible beep, um, as you see, like, a coordinate blip pop up on your map, and, like, a little note. Oh. So now, I'll just have to communicate this to the rest of the party without coming off like a traitor. <laughs> yeah some of them might be like alright we're gonna hunt this person down um yes <laughs> yeah so let's let's get a name generated for this person that you're gonna be hunting down here oh that's kind of interesting uh the man's name is Yong 6 like the number six, I will copy and paste it in the chat for you. And the name, if if Wu Yang is is like a real name, six is probably like the uh, the number they were in their uh, Inky battalion or something. Like this person used to work for the Inky, they they turned their backs on them. Uh, that's that's what you've heard, at least, if you look them up in your, you know, database or whatever. Right. Uh, they used to work for the Enki, turned their backs on them, betrayed them, took a bunch of info, gave it to the enemy, kind of thing. And then they fled, and nobody's been able to track them down. 
you have a picture of the person so you can identify them uh, by wait, wait 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 so Europa sent this to my communicator device can't yep. the inky like pull that information off of there um it probably yeah. says like encrypted on it so oh yeah like Europa is gonna leave the decision up to you so like um there most stuff probably could be pulled from your device but I think this transmission would be encrypted, so you'd probably have to access it from your device directly unless you share it with others. Okay, cool. All right, I'd then ask Europa about uh, temporary lodgings. So we'll need to set up, like, the launching off point to go and rescue this person. Yeah. Um... I can find you accommodations with someone in the city, I'm sure. You still have many available, just in case. We acquire more refugees. Glad to hear it. Give me one second. I'm going to generate a person for her to send you to. Okay, so another ping. Um, you get a location in the city this time uh, for a man named Aho. A U H O. And you also get a picture. This one's probably not encrypted. Um, but you also have a picture of the guy. Very kind looking, middle aged man, smiling at the camera. They took a picture of him. Um, he's dressed in sort of like silken robes. Nothing too ostentatious. It's kind of plain, but they're clearly of like high quality. Um, and he's wearing like a fairly well crafted silk hat. Um, the description uh, would say something along the lines of he is like the leader of a uh, of a development of family uh, accommodations. So uh, basically, he's like a landlord manager. The way things work here in Nineveh is people typically live together in large groups. So you might have a lot of people that share a very large like dining hall, for example. Um, they, they have a strong um, cultural um, value of people like befriending each other and living together and taking care of each other and that kind of thing. Um, Super strong sense of community, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's like a big part of the culture here. So like uh, a lot of these uh, living like buildings, we saw some of them on the, uh, on the map of the city last time. I think it was called the Blocks. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of those have like shared... Uh, everybody has like their own bedroom and stuff, obviously, but a lot of those have like shared dining halls meant for like huge gatherings of people, um, that sort of thing. And like common areas probably where people can put on shows and, and, and hang out with each other, interact. There's probably a lot of that. Okay. Uh, but yeah, you get like coordinates for like a specific building uh, in that district um, and uh, note that... Uh, that Aho will be uh, looking out for you, basically. Awesome. All right. I uh, guess we could finish up with uh, anybody else who wanted to talk to Europa. Yeah, I think... Um, let me move myself over to the right screen because I've already got you guys there. Um, I think Narcissa... Uh, like when you look over and you're sort of done with your conversation, she seems to be lost in thought, have probably having a similar conversation. Um, and I think you probably see her make her way over to a space in the floor, not right up against this other person, but nearby. Um, and, you know, sitting down and just like staring at the, the big pillar to have her own uh, private conversation. And she uh, she doesn't look like 
she's not like the other person. The other person who's like crying tears of joy, right? She has more of a um uh like she she furrows her brow, like she's almost kind of irritated or maybe a little bit angry. Um and when she she kind of like goes over there and she sits down in sort of a huff, like almost like a kid being sent to timeout or something. Like she doesn't look happy uh to be here. But Yeah. Hey. Uh, does anybody else want to talk to the robot? No? no. You're free to leave. <laughs> March get put in time out. Oh, you're here. <laughs> yeah, I was just <laughs> messaging that. I was like, hold on. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Maury joins us. Hey, Maury. Um, yeah, no. Okay. If you're here, you're not put in time out. You're not, you're not. You're not put in time. I just wanted to get you away from the group if you were if you were going to be late, so nothing bad could happen to you. Okay. <laughs> you know, I, I came in while you were that. still talking to Dank, so I didn't want to interrupt or anything. <laughs> okay, you're fine. <laughs> uh, well, Did in you that case, want to talk to her. <laughs> I would. All right. I do like the idea that I got put in time off with a robot, though. <laughs> Please stick with that idea. <laughs> no, but I'm you curious. Would join us. I'm curious to see how the robot would make me do it, though. It's just like having a long talk with you about some stuff, you know, therapy stuff. Oh gosh. That's all it was going to do. That would be a long therapy session. It'd be up to you. Oh, God. That would require a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. Who needs therapy? Everyone. Yeah, she'd everyone. be there for like the next five. Uh, all right. Well, if you want to have a conversation with Europa, what do you say? Uh, I believe she started her conversation with hello. I think so. I think she said hi to everybody. You know. Since they have to start verbally. Um, I mean, you'd be talking in your head when you respond if you want. It's up to you. All right. But I mean, like, her verbal response was like, hello. Yeah, yeah. Hello. You're quite large. Rado calls the robot fat. <laughs> <laughs> no, like physically large. <laughs> yes, I suppose that's true. It was quite difficult for the city's founders to carry me here. You weren't built here? <laughs> no. Of course not. I was found in an old abandoned section of tunnels by some of the earliest people who fled through during the rash of plagues. I told them that if they were to bring me along, I would be able to open the way to a hidden vault with plenty of food and Life support. It must have been lonely all by yourself. I suppose so. Yes.
Is there anything I can help you with, Narcissa? You can see, like, her head jerk at her. Is like, you know, like, that instant, like, side eye. How do you know my name? I can see inside your thoughts during conversations like this. Interesting. I do not judge. Is it loneliness that makes you hear these things? More curiosity. Yes, I suppose curiosity can be a strong motivator as well. Is it simply Pain and evil that you seek to spread? Mm. No. Then it serves a purpose. Some people don't think so. But I want to understand how things work. Be it natural, mechanical, whatever. Sometimes that ends up a life being lost. We have more in common than you think. I too have lost many lives in the search for knowledge and understanding. Yenabe hasn't always been such a peaceful place. Your ring guardian mentioned that. Things have become better as I've learned and as I've taught my children. They also become better for me. For you. Maybe. Have you Maybe. Been, have you found any of the answers you seek? Do you even know the questions? Sometimes. Uh, she's gonna like look down at her hands. They're like, 
you know, covered in scars, burns, acid. Sometimes it's just the boredom, the quiet. It gets too much. I can understand how quiet and darkness can do this, but it is important to try to hang on to the light in yourself. It's never too late. You like to make people good, don't you? I like to make people able to survive what lies ahead and people will need to be their best to do that. Uh, she's going to nod slightly to that. I also believe that a life without enjoyment and happiness is hardly one worth living. So that is what I try to give to my people. While it's something I haven't felt for a while, it's something I can agree with. But you want to understand the fell, right? Yeah. I'm not certain that you ever will. But maybe you can learn to enjoy the journey as well as the search for these answers. Perhaps learning things on the way that you didn't expect can bring just as much of that happiness as understanding everything. Maybe. We'll just have to see. I suppose you will. For what it's worth, I hope this is a painless process for you. If there's no pain, you don't grow. 
this can be true. I'm gonna just hope that pain isn't always necessary. But I've learned that sometimes it is the only thing that will get the job done. But that never made it easier for me. When my children voted hundreds of cycles ago to intervene in the Assyrian supremacy to create machines to light them from certain corridors. This was the only time I asked them to reconfirm their decision. And it took many side rules for our people to come to terms with the violence we committed. It must have broken your heart. It was a learning experience. that you will not have to resort to such tactics again. that from happening again. Now, I think he's been mean? getting um and he's been getting on my nerves lately. Really? How so? The cowards think my experiments are getting too dangerous. They also think that I am too dangerous, do they not? From the room floating around. Of course, I'm not high enough to get any real information. We're all low men on the totem pole. People see that which they don't understand as a threat. Sometimes right. this is good. It can keep you alive when it is a threat. Survival instinct, I suppose. 
But also means you can destroy things that could be potentially beneficial or helpful. Yes. There's many things lost to time because of this. Knowledge can also be worded, used as a weapon against one's enemies. And while well, I've had thousands of cycles, perhaps multiple flickers to learn the best course of action for these things. Humans don't have that kind of time. So, I do admit that I hesitate to put too much power into their hands. I don't blame you at all. It's been in our history to destroy things. And it has also been in my But we learn. We try to do better. Well, nobody's perfect. Be scary if even you were. No, not perfect. I just want to protect my children. She's just going to, like, nod and step back a little bit. Okay. No, are we are we ready to go set up shop? I I've think secured us some idea. accommodations. <laughs> What's everybody else say? Did Liz fall asleep on us? I think she just stepped away for a minute. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, I was eating at the same time. Yes. <laughs> nom, nom, nom. Were you eating your bananas? Uh, no, it was a Popeye's chicken sandwich. <laughs> oh. This should be kind of <laughs> jealous. <laughs> All right, so I guess I would share the coordinates of uh, Aho's residence. So uh, we can all head over that way. As soon as Liz gets back. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah, you guys uh, step outside the uh, the city hall. Um, and the first thing you see is... Uh, was it Arbalaya? 
the uh, mm -hmm. oh God. the child. Arby. Yeah. yeah, Arby. And uh, Arby's standing there talking to this other guy. And it's back to you, right? And he's like, uh, mm -hmm. uh, So when you came along, just a few minutes ago, I was stuck talking to these people. They were just absolute, uh, just insufferable. They're so boring. <laughs> and the uh, the guy is like, uh, you used me? <laughs> yeah, do you guys interrupt? No, 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 no. Let's yeah. see no. how far he can put his foot in his mouth. Yeah, here. yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the guy's like, boring? What do you mean? I'm sure no one here has uh, a boring story to tell. And uh, the, <laughs> the robot's like, no, they were the worst. They, they just, they couldn't even tolerate my, my bubbling personality for a second. So I just told them, hey, look, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm a big deal around here. I'll, um, I'll introduce you to, to, uh, dear Ropa. Uh, you know, they're only like the, the leader of the whole city. Um, and I'll do that personally, you know, and, and they were just, it's like, they seemed really, uh, sad i don't know like they probably didn't even have an artistic like uh bone in their body uh just completely just boring just boring people i kick the shit out of it <laughs> uh now now it's probably not a good okay. idea you can um it. you can kick Marissa, it so it's gonna like cover um Shit, what's his name? I'm not gonna tell you. Ar Arbalash? <laughs> no. Oh, you're talking about Disrupt no, 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 no. Mouth. She is going to stop him from talking, talking about, Jeb out of it. You're talking about Jeb? <laughs> no, she's going to cover Dis's mouth yeah. so that way he doesn't stop Jeb from kicking Arby. Oh, okay. <laughs> How dare. <laughs> Alright. It's just like, nope, 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 he deserves this. <laughs> You did say you were kicking the shit out of it, so why don't you make? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, why don't you? Make like a... It'd be like a roll like... to break your foot. Yeah, it'd be like a melee a melee roll. Um... How far can Jeb stick his foot in his mouth? Yeah, I mean, he, Jeb's about to get his foot shoved up his ass here in a second. So, <laughs> you know what? I'm an man. You can kick it. You'll be fine. Okay. No, no, I don't want to kick it. <laughs> Watch our party member get murdered. I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't really going to hurt you. It's fine. You it's can... fine. It's fine. Okay. Right. right. You can, like, shoulder check him as you walk by or something. I just throw a banana at him. <laughs> yeah, That'll okay. bring me down to 13. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got to make sure you keep track of those bananas. Oh, trust me, I am. Uh, it's ammo. You gotta keep track of ammo, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, so he's sitting there talking to this guy, and this banana splats on his shoulder, like the peel. And he stops in the middle of the sentence. He, like, looks down at the banana. And then he picks it up <laughs> off his shoulder with two fingers, and he turns around and sees you all standing there. <laughs> the, uh, the, uh... None of us looking happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> The, uh, the like, just like Jedi, Liz, you know? he was calling us boring. Boring Will and sad. And what? Arby was calling us boring and sad and not artistic. Yeah. So I threw a banana at him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Race. I, I don't know. Torturing people is boring, but okay. Uh, the, uh, let's see here. Because we're basically back out here on the streets now. So I mean, I've got a new token for him. So let me pull that. Let's see here. Here we go. Listen here, Robo Boy. Um, Listen here, you little shit. So yeah, so the <laughs> the the big red circle on his like face plate, like lens or whatever you want to call it, um, it turns to like a, a half crescent upside down, and like a little water drop symbol beside it, right? Like an anime. Or <laughs> <laughs> oh, but... <laughs> and, uh, and, and he's like, uh, so this is what he says. Oh, uh, sorry, I didn't, uh, see you guys there. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. uh, 
these are the um, very entertaining people I was telling you a, a, about. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you guys met your Oprah, right? How, how, how did that go? Did you guys give me five stars? So I just guys... mock everything that he says. <laughs> I just don't even pay attention to him. Dang, yeah. where was the where was the place that we need to go again? Oh yeah, let me send. Just you like completely list. ignore Aubrey. Yeah, yeah. So like I uh, <laughs> use my communicator deal to just send you guys the coordinates. Let's take a look at the city map. So it's a good hike uh, from where you guys are at. Let me bring you over here. Okay. So you guys are I at like the city. How, I like how nobody answered this guy's question. We were like, okay, yeah, whatever. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I said five stars and gave him a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Something star. pops up on your wrist devices where it's like, did you enjoy the uh, tour service provided by Arbalaya? Uh, what would you rate it on a scale of mm -hmm. one to five? Um, uh, I'm going to look right. at it and be like, is there a negative option? <laughs> As we walk yes. away. <laughs> Just to spite him. Yeah, he's like... Uh, I'll do the stereotypical, if I could put no stars, I would. <laughs> oh, that's, that's not very, um, like kind or useful uh, you know view bombing is like a really serious issue okay like it's it, it's not cool to do that uh boring we were oh, lame okay. anyways not artistic sad story and she's like looking at Arbalaya as she says this and starts counting on her fingers. Shall I continue? Yeah, well, maybe you should like learn to be more sociable, like me. You know, Somebody it's not that hard. <laughs> Somebody hold me holds back. Jeff back. <laughs> Somebody hold me back. <laughs> Thanks, holding we Jeff. Back. <laughs> look at me. I'm covered in scars. Do I look sociable? I do believe you're talking to some of the most unsociable people I've ever met. I don't know. I'd like to think I'm pretty sociable. You're That's probably the only sociable of us. Well, you know, every group's got to have a face. I have an eye. I thought she, <laughs> she just like pulls an eyeball out of her pocket. That would be way better. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Just your spare eye running around. Okay, this is my eye it was removed when I lost a fight. Next. <laughs> well, you'd think that people who look so funny would have more of a sense of humor, you know? <laughs> think it's funny when someone's in pain. Yeah, I mean, you should, like, talk to somebody about that. It's pretty, uh, dark. Therapy we were talking to Europa about that. That's the whole reason why we came here. To get well, help. Hopefully she gave you the help that you so clearly need. This motherfucker! This come on, motherfucker! Come on. Holding him back. He's just a kid. Yeah, he I'm gonna kick the shit out of this kid! He looks at the guys he's, he was talking to and he's like, he gives him a look like, right? Am I right? <laughs> Listen, child, I have no idea how much you want to get yourself killed, but this is not the best way to do it. I would advise not threatening the robot. more than fucking threaten this robot. Come on, guys. Let's let's just go. 
<laughs> why I oughta. Good seeing you again, Arby. I just wish she was under different circumstances. Rub her temples, grab Dis and Jeb, and just turn around and walk away. <laughs> okay, that's probably for the best. Yep. <laughs> um. All right. Talking so shit behind people's backs. <laughs> and by the shit. way, she has not submitted her rating yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh. We just got talked shit to our faces. I prefer <laughs> by that. a robot. I'd prefer that. <laughs> yeah. I secretly like this kid because he was straight savage to all of us. Yes. <laughs> straight savage. Kicking him in his goddamn stupid robot fucking face. <laughs> These children know no fear. I don't care. <laughs> Robots don't have feelings. Come on now. Some do. Hey, that's I not don't. true. I'm more in touch with, with my emotions than you are. <laughs> you. <laughs> oh, you're Correct. following us now? Shall we add stalking to the list? <laughs> I love this fucking kid. All right, He's all right. awesome. He goes, he goes back to his conversation. Just some more she <laughs> I literally love this kid. Thanks, I'll like, see you later, Arby. <laughs> um all right so you guys are at the city hall area right now um the uh the place that you're staying is probably somewhere in the blocks uh so we'll just pick a spot here we'll say it's like this building here um now uh if you guys are just like looking for stuff to do uh you probably would hear about the pavilion, which is the place I was talking to you guys before game about. If we don't have to do that, everybody's here, obviously. Um, you know, you've been to the Green Ring already. You kind of see what you have there. There's also like Citizens Print, um, you, the the People's Academy, and the and the Ziggurat. Um, so if you guys wanted to like ask about some of these different places uh, to people, you can. Maybe not Arbalaya now. Um, <laughs> Uh, or you can just go and, and meet uh, Aho. Your, uh... Probably still answer is he'd probably just be very sarcastic about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, so now you want to be artsy. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, uh, yeah, you guys don't want to go to the pavilion. Only pe people go there to have fun. You guys are such downers. That's not really where you want to go. <laughs> are we still in like a densely populated area? Uh, yeah, I mean, so, like, this, uh, so the area you're probably standing in right now is probably right around here, somewhere right outside City Hall. So, there's a lot of crowds, uh, because people are always, like, traveling to City Hall or to places around City Hall, like, maybe some of the shops and stuff. There's always, like, people walking around. Um, so, like, anywhere pretty much in the city is fairly densely populated. Uh, yeah. Are you looking for something in particular? I'm just looking for, like, a quiet place so I can pull everybody aside and talk to them real quick without being overheard. Uh, yeah, you could probably find, like, an alley or, or something like that relatively easily. Uh, the only question is, like, being overheard? Like, there's probably monitoring equipment all yeah, over. Yeah, that's why I don't want it to be near City Hall. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean... Uh, if you stop and ask somebody, uh, why don't we get our place? I'm sure once we get yeah. our place, it we'll have get our advantage. place and then we'll go take a walk in the green ring because there's not going to be monitoring equipment in the forest, right? There was feeding equipment there, right? Like, remember when you guys were it. there and you saw those feeder things that were hanging down from the sky? There probably won't be anything yeah. inside our place of refuge, though. Whatever they give us, I doubt that. There's probably but some sort of like able... listening devices. Shit, I'm gonna need to write this down. So, but we'll be able to check it though. You could ask people, like, what? Because you don't really know what it's like here. You could ask people, like, I mean, I don't know if you want to ask somebody. Hey, is Europa gonna be able to hear everything we do in our, our, you know, apartment? And they'd be like, well, why do you care, right? Um, okay, so I'm I sure guess we could ask um, Aho though. He would understand. Maybe. 
No, probably not, because he's like a big like leader in the city or whatever. Yeah, he's kind of like... Okay, so yeah. on the way to our place, I'm going to see about picking up uh, some notebooks and some writing implements. Okay. Because uh, uh, if there's video recording and audio recording, all we'd have to do is make sure we're in like a camera blind spot or whatever. Write it down, close the notebook, pass it over, pick it up, read it respond that way we wouldn't be overheard yeah. or is everybody you know, literate everybody better be literate we sure <laughs> fucking hope so because if we're scientists if some of us are scientists <laughs> i swear to god <laughs> i'm not saying my handwriting is gonna be great but <laughs> His handwriting is literally probably like a doctor's, just M, squiggle, 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 S, okay. squiggle, squiggle. No writing in cursive. One character is being suspiciously quiet, though. Could be meditating. Because <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know how. You, you sit to, there I'm, and you be quiet. That's meditating. There you go. I'll, I'll flip a coin. Heads, I'm, you know, I can actually read and write. Tails, I'm dumb as shit. Oh, come on, man. Please do it. Swear no, to God. No. Please. Do it. They're right here on... Uh, just, oh, man. All right, hey, Google. <laughs> flip a coin. Oh, no. It landed on tails. All right, dumb as shit. Is <laughs> <laughs> it? Spider of the group? Yeah, maybe you're like the muscle of the group or something. Yeah. <laughs> That would track. I'm getting, I'm getting big. Uh, what is it, Jamie from uh, uh, Firefly? Jamie, right? Mm -hmm. Oh my mm -hmm. god! <laughs> big himbo energy. Yeah, yeah. Himbo. I shoot guns good. Himbo energy. Do you actually have points in firearm usage too? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. At yeah, least you got. In that shit. There right. you go. Give me one second. I'm gonna Fair um, buy a bright real fast. You guys chat, and I'll be right back. Yeah. I did a, <laughs> oh my I did god. Plus three, plus one, and plus one. I am so oh glad god. Are we, we gonna have just to... someone who's dumb as hell who just wants to <laughs> fight everybody? <laughs> I mean, it's made sense. He's the only one who's actually wanted to like attack Arvia, the whole group, too. Oh my god, dude. I wanted to punt that fucker so bad. Oh, Since yo, we've met oh, him, before he's even actually done anything. Let me ask this, Gerblin, Would you kick? Would you kick the robot? I personally would. <laughs> At first, no, but after the their their sad comment, yeah. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I fucking called him sad, and I'm like, you don't even know what sad is, my dude. Yeah. I don't even know what sad is. Like, what are feelings? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Gerblin! <laughs> what do you say? Oh, Gerblin is psychic. Yeet the sassy robot, baby. Alright, I'm here. We were getting chat involved hell. with uh, whether or not to kill the baby. <laughs> Sorry, robot. Anna puts a damper on my plans if you can't read. <laughs> you can just... You can just, you know, whisper it in my ear. Yeah, but you're dumb as shit. What if you don't go along with the plan? <laughs> I just can't read and write. I understand everything perfectly. Hey, yeah, that's very judgmental, man. <laughs> he just, he's dumb as shit. <laughs> Literally flipped a coin no. for dumb as shit. But, no, no, Dyke, here's the best part. We don't know this yet. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> oh, uh-huh, yeah, probably not. Uh, how do write? <laughs> you write a thing down, and then he goes, I don't know what this is. Hi, my name's Chad. I'm 19, and I never learned I how to learn. read. I never learned how to read. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna go to, like, we're gonna go over to like. Oh Bayan god, I'm gonna and... I'm gonna be the first one to pass a note to him, and he's gonna be like, "What does this say?" And I'm gonna be like, "Oh, I mean, okay, sorry, that is chicken scratch." But and then you're gonna go like, "No, wait, I can't read." <laughs> like, no, literally, the fuck does it say? 
so yeah, um, <laughs> would I be able to well, find somebody have... selling those kind of wares? Yeah, totally. I think uh, yeah. paper is probably more expensive than you might expect because it's super rare. Like, this is probably the only place in the world you can find paper. Yeah, they've got trees. Yeah, um, but they don't, like, cut them down <laughs> often. Yeah, but I mean, like, they still get tree limbs. You don't need to log an entire tree to make paper. True. Like, branches fall off. You can just get it all down to wood pulp. Yeah. Um, and, Not to uh, mention, depending on how long it's been going on, trees do die eventually. Yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah, you might be able to find some stuff. Uh, you got credits, right? Like, Yeah. How yeah. much is... Uh, and Narcissa would help him, too, if she figures out what he's doing. Okay. Okay. How much paper are we trying to get? I want, like, a notebook. Okay. Like... How many writing implements? Uh, Narcissa I mean, would have pins on her, so you don't need writing implements. We just need the notebook. Okay, cool. So yeah, I, I'll just buy a notebook. Uh, but like fifty pages. It's a million credits. I'm just kidding. Really? <laughs> no. It's, Look. It's probably like <laughs> it's probably only like I don't know, like ten. Ten at most. Okay. Oh, that's it. Yeah, it's probably. Like I same. buy like two. All right. Uh, oh. nurses the well you do you do one and I'll do another and I'll do one. We have like five thousand credits. I'm buying two notebooks. And we just getting two of you then. Alright. You can definitely see like she wants to get more and Dang's probably dragging her off. <laughs> come on, we've got stuff to do. The paper We can always come back. Fine. Uh, all right. She's she's Go going ahead. to offer one to disrupt. <laughs> offer it, sure. Jeb. I can't eat this. <laughs> <Girl>. <laughs> a public oh notebook God. and a secret notebook. <laughs> secret notebook. Dear <laughs> diary. One just got offered to dif- disrupt, so no, no secret notebook. <laughs> Not right. yet. Uh, so you probably have to go into like a little shop. You know, they, it's not like uh, the doors are probably open door. Um, and yeah, you just walk in. There's a bunch. It's probably just like uh, like a writing shop. So there's a lot of like different kinds of paper. There's pro- also those metal like tablet things we saw before. Those metal sheets people write on. Um, there's there's like pencils type things and pens and stuff. And and there's even like quills and things like that. And there's also like mm. these. Um, these sharp, uh, like metallic devices that you would use to do etching. There's probably quite a few of those because I think the most common form of writing is probably into those like metal sheets, at least in other parts of the world. Um, and there's even probably like some calligraphy stuff, but you can get some something relatively cheap. Uh, they probably have a little. They have of something that's like a like an erasable surface, like you can like a like a whiteboard, like a pencil, kind of like a whiteboard, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you could find something like that. Yeah. The question is, do you want it to not be technology? Yes, I want it to be as low tech as possible. Yeah. Um. So what you they probably would recommend is <laughs> the equivalent of like a. Uh, it's like a, it looks like one of those metal sheets, but it's like really glossy. And then they recommend like a particular kind of writing implement, probably something similar to like a marker, like a dry erase marker. And he demonstrates he like writes something. Uh, in cuneiform on the the sheet, and then he just wipes it off with his hand. And he's like, see? Yes, I want that. How much is that? Uh, He says, well, this will be together with the set. Uh, I'll do 30 credits, and I'll throw in two extra of these writing implements. Wait, you've got yourself a deal. Yeah, he nods. Smiles. Okay. Yeah, you hold up your wrist device and you like sign over the credits to him or you like motion with your hand in the hologram and the credits mm-hmm. like you see your credits go down and he looks at his and he seems happy. Um when you're looking at your wrist device, make a uh you have like a perception y kind of roll? I do. Let me see.
games. There we go. Jeb can always just like make a memory where he learned to read or write and now he just knows. That's no fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if he really yeah, wanted to solve it was that just a, It was just established that he was really <laughs> dumb. <laughs> But I'm, all, point flip was nothing. all I'm saying is that maybe he's really dumb because he can't remember stuff. Just like. Well, I mean, it is an interesting problem to work around. Yeah. True. Yeah, it is. Uh, but all right. Too, yeah. Success. Okay, so here's what happens. You're looking at your your like hologram device. You're like It's like, oh, credits transferred. You're like, okay. And you start to put your arm back down as the credits menu thing disappears. And it shows like a map of like the area you're in. Um, like a little, like, maybe it's kind of like a, like the fallout map on a pit boy or something. Right. Okay. Um, but there's like a little blip nearby. And so you do like a double take cause you almost missed it the first time you're about to look back up at the guy and you look back down you see like there's a little blip relatively close by. It's within a couple blocks, uh, and it's moving toward you guys at about a brisk walking pace. What does the blip signify? Do I know that? Uh, you click, you click on the blip. You like indicate it with your finger, and it says, uh, <laughs> it says encrypted uh, inky <gasps> inky road breaker, Con and then it's like in parentheses contact all caps. Uh oh. Okay. I uh, kind of. After making the purchase, I thank the guy. Discreetly, you know, notify the rest of the party members. Hey, we got company coming. Well, he's distracted getting the whiteboard. Can I buy a couple more notebooks? <laughs> sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> God! I get six more. Okay, okay yeah. Spend, spend Narcissus is, like, hoarding the notebooks. <laughs> like, the what, only start place... journaling? It's the only place you can get paper. <laughs> it is, yeah. Somebody doing a the ABCs of Nibiru. <laughs> Why do you think oh, I got God. the erasable writing implement thing? <laughs> we can teach you to read and write. <laughs> that's that's going to be half of our campaign now. It's going to be like steadily teaching Jeb how to read. <laughs> <laughs> Just oh, make man. sure Dis isn't the one to start teaching him. Yeah. Oh, God. It's for Arson. <laughs> this is how you spell arson. <laughs> you don't want Narcissa teaching him either. You don't want Narcissa teaching him either. And this is how you spell euthanasia. <laughs> yes. B is for burglary. <laughs> M is for mermaid. Now we're going to go catch one. <laughs> <laughs> See, I usually use M for murder, but all right. Yeah, he's for torture. <laughs> we are not going in an alphabetical so sequence much. at all. <laughs> so, <laughs> so do you guys like head outside to meet this person, or are you gonna like wait in the rest of the store, or like what? What's the plan? I mean, I assume there's less people in the store than there is out on the street. Yeah. I'm sure we're like by the doorway so that way he can see us though. Yeah. All right. So you guys are hanging out by the doorway. Eventually, uh, you do see a man approaching. Let's see here. Let me um let me do this. Your tokens are here. They're just hidden, so I'm just going to Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Pop them up there so we can see you guys. Just in case we need to keep track of health or something. I don't know what you guys are going to do. Oh, no. We're going to uh, fight Yes, please people. injure me. This, this guy walks in. So he's wearing um, what looks like hide robes, uh, like a traveling cloak. Um, underneath and even like partly visible uh, is what looks like high quality armor. Um, he's got a, like a red tattoo on one side of his face. 
let me uh, let me make this a little bit easier to see for you guys here. Uh, so he's got like a red tattoo on one side of his face, grizzled uh, beard, facial hair. He looks a little bit road worn. Uh, he's got like a satchel over his shoulder. Uh, and he walks into the place. He looks around. Uh, he looks first. He looks at the shopkeep. Uh, he makes eye contact with him, and then he stares at him a bit too long. Uh, and then he looks over everyone in the store, and his gaze settles on you all. Uh, he then approaches you, and he uh, he reaches down to his waist and points a device. That is attached to his belt at you all. At one of you. We'll say who does anybody like step up to talk to this guy or anything? He seems to be like approaching you. I've got the encrypted data on my thing, and I know this guy's a rogue breaker. I don't want to be the one to get scanned. No. I could. Absolutely not. <laughs> so he's like approaching you, you see him like reach down to his belt and he's kind of like trying to hide it like a little bit, but he like points a, he grabs a device. It's like very high, high quality made. It's basically like just enough to fit in the palm. Uh, and then uh, just outside like the fist where there's like a closed fist. If you're holding your hand like this around like a metal cylinder, there's two prongs. They come out to about this far. Um, and then on the end of those prongs are like these spiked metal tips. Uh, and yeah, he just holds this device and he points it at you all as he walks up. And it's kind of like he's like keeping it below a display. He doesn't want the, the shopkeep to see it necessarily. Um, and he's sort of watching for anybody else to see it. Maybe he like finagles it under his satchel so it's not quite as visible. Uh, Excuse me, sir. Is there something I can help you with? Uh, yeah, he looks at you all and he says, you're the contact, right? Inky, Silas, here for a job? And he, like, raises an eyebrow, and he looks at his wrist. <laughs> and I'm over here like, oh, my lord, is he really just saying this? <laughs> Dangerous words you're speaking there, friend. Yeah, he's not, like, talking loud. He's keeping his voice muffled. I think it quite okay. Enough, at least the shopkeep can't hear him. You're new love, aren't you? Uh, he squints his eyes and uh, he shakes his head. Not new. Working new to this kind of stuff. And she like waves her hand around a little bit. Uh, yeah, he says, uh, I've been in Nineveh for 10 cycles. Who the hell are you? Oh, how fine of you to ask, he says. Let's generate a name for him. <laughs> God uh, damn it. <laughs> he says, uh, he says, uh, my name's Jedra, but you can call me Jay. You all found accommodations, yeah? We have to go sort. To to. What's it to you? Well, I have to report to Silas if you made it in or not. It sounds like it might be a little important, right? Forgive our skepticism, but uh, not very often somebody just approaches you out of the blue like that, right out in public. Got any kind of verification so we can, you know, be at ease and know you are who you say you are? Yeah, he, he pulls up his wrist device. And he, like, tucks the, the weapon back on in, uh, his belt loop for a second. Hesitantly takes his hand off of it. And he brings his free hand up to the device, swipes something, uh, and you get, it like, a notification that pops up on yours where it shows, like, the inky symbol. This is contact, Jedra, Roadbreaker. Fair enough. Eh, go ahead and let him know we made it in. He nods. Um, and he says, uh, 
looks like you all uh, went straight to City Hall. That was... Bold? Yeah, he tilts his head. <laughs> like, yep. Know thine enemy. Okay. What better way to gain understanding by opening a dialogue? Yeah, he nods. Learn anything useful? Europa's been kind of tight-lipped, but a couple of things managed to slip through. Like what? This might take a while. Uh, in regards to some of the machines under its control. Okay. What about them? Well, even the most basic ones are significantly more deadly than they appear. Yeah, he nods. He says, uh, he kind of like leans in. He says, trust me, you don't want to mess with the children. Those things are rude. Monsters? He nods. I've seen them tear. Goes, fear, that's for sure. He goes, I've seen one of them tear a man's arm off at the shoulder. Well, wouldn't be the first time I've had something removed. It's not as scary as it seems. And cycles, though. I mean, we just got here not too long ago. Have you picked up anything interesting? Well, mostly my job is to disrupt supply lines from time to time. Maybe cause a distraction here, a burning building there. Mostly I just want to try to help when agents come in looking for trade, that kind of thing. Or so... if they need to hunt down a rogue vagabond, I try to assist with that from time to time. Fair enough. So if you're not a part of this project, then why would Silas want us to report to you instead of him himself? Local contact. Think of it this way. I've got a reputation for doing my job correctly here and for 10 cycles. Not every inky agent can be trusted. Sometimes it's best to just verify. Oh, they did check in. They are where they said they were going to be. Just in case you all decide to disappear. Understandable. Nothing wrong with that. Well, the Vagabonds here are quite careless. Uh, they don't take as many security precautions as you might be accustomed to in Asher. That's for sure. They feel safe here. So, if you do spot one, and it doesn't seem like too high profile a target, feel free to pick them up. Give me a call. I can, um, I can find a way for our colleagues to get him out. Take him where Good they to know. need to be. Do you know any place in the city where we could have a conversation without being observed or overheard? Europa is kind of everywhere here. <laughs> well, if you were to ask the locals, they would tell you, just look at the streets and the structures, and you will start your meeting with Europa, I think they call it. Basically, I wouldn't be surprised if there were some sort of observation devices in every structure of the city. I think the key would be to try to avoid saying things that may attract its attention for example you don't exactly want to go shouting things like and he mouths the word bomb or 
gun. <laughs> he just <laughs> mouths the word without saying it, right? Um, probably best to avoid those sorts of things. Interesting, considering you came in and said mouths the word Angie pretty easily. Yeah, I think well, that would be right there at the top of the list of things not to say. He said, it "Does he goes? Uh, it does help when you have one of these." And he like holds up his wrist device, and he like swipes a thing where it makes it visible to you, right? Like he can see the hologram, maybe, but you, like you can't see it until he swipes a thing. Uh, and then you see that there's like a same picture of the map that you have, but there's like static flickering across it. He goes, uh, "Do I get me one of those?" He says, uh, "I might be able to acquire you one. We got the credits." How much? He uh, he pauses for a moment and raises an eyebrow, like, "How much can I get out of you?" Don't think to try to rip us off, Fred. I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> she just flat out says, "I'll kill you." Yeah, now, he's... now, let's not be too hasty. He's like, "Well, that rip hardly... me off. I'll just kill you." That hardly makes me want to help. I might be able to acquire something like this for you for three k. Deep prices. What about our employee discounts? Yeah. Hi, we are part of the same organization. <laughs> yeah, well, you can always ask Silas to give you one for free. Let's see how that goes. I can imagine that going over pretty well. Fair enough. We are on a rather important mission. I can probably swing two for five. Um, but that's about my limit. I mean, that's cost. How much of uh, a radius do one of these things cover? Uh, well, it only covers one square block. That's a pretty big radius. He nods. It's not bad. It definitely helps if you want to have a private conversation. You just got to make sure that people don't overhear you. And if you're in proximity to one of those... Creepy little kid things. Fair enough. All right, you guys want to all pitch in? We can get two with just one K from each of us. Everyone comes up with them. I'll chip in. So you're gonna get two of sure. these. Sure. You can get two of these for five K. Everybody's pitching in a K. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. So, Hi. Say so like. Pulls up his device. He's like waiting for you to sign over the credits. You guys sign over the credits. He's like, all right, uh, send me coordinates where you're going to be staying. And I should be able to get it by there. Uh, if not tonight, late tonight, then early in the next laps. You all have anything you're working on currently? Just getting situated as of yet. Fair enough. I'd recommend checking out Citizens Print if you haven't already. If you're just looking for fun, I suppose the pavilion might be a place worth looking at. There is qu quite the interesting display of Bright Town artifacts there. Maybe that could be useful. Not really sure what project you're working on exactly. I know what I'm doing next. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he nods. Fair enough. I gesture to one of you guys to send him over the coordinates. Narcissa yeah. pulls out hers and sends it to him. <clears throat> and if we don't see you in three, you better tell Silas you pissed off Hack Job. He'll know why you're gone. <laughs> yeah, he he uh, he grins. Uh, really. That's the second time he's been threatened with his life. Yeah, he's just... it's been here for ten cycles. He knows what he's about. Yeah, he smiles when you do it. Like it's like you gave him a compliment, right? Um, I'm important enough to threaten. Um, he says, uh, "Really, the hack job?" 
He kind of smiles. I think Silas can get me out of my damn land. What? What? I missed that. Only Silas can get me out of my damn lab. Fair enough. I didn't think they called you out into the field. Well, it must be willingly. It must be important then. Very. All right. Well, I'll see what I can do. It looks like I'll be meeting you at uh, Aho's place. Huh? Nice guy. Be a shame if something happened to him. Then he walks out. I'll kill you. Narcissa just gives him like. Good gracious. Narcissa gives him like a grin that he should probably know all too well when he says that. Yeah, yeah. If he fucks up this operation, he's gonna get murdered. Oh, he's gonna get significantly worse than murdered. Oh, don't worry. I'll put him on my table if that happens. All of us going ham on this guy. <laughs> it will not end well for you. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. So, got our stuff, got our accommodations. Soon we will have privacy. Soon. Can Soon I have a privacy, bed now? TM. <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and get First to our lodgings. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and get to the lodgings, get everything set up. And then I'm going to check out the pavilion. They mentioned. <laughs> no, no, he wants to check out the pavilion. The pavilion? Pavilion. <laughs> Had a mustache hair get stuck in my mouth. I think, <laughs> I think our nickname should be the dangerous fuck. <laughs> <laughs> or the crazy ones. Ah, those are both two on the nose. We gotta come up with something more... ...fun. <laughs> Alright. So, you guys are gonna go to your lodgings first. That's fair enough. So, you meet Aho. Uh, he's probably, like, when you get to the building that you need to be at, um, the, um, the first floor is... Uh, it's got like the four corners of the building are probably really these really thick like steel beams um, and then underneath is like just a courtyard seating area kind of uh, so a bunch of think like um, like uh, patio furniture right so just mm -hmm. like and probably like tile metallic tile uh, and patio furniture and just open sides or windows in some places but mostly just open to the air uh, and there's just, like a lot of seating space for people to like just sit, hang out, enjoy the scenery, that kind of thing. Um, and uh, if you ask, hey, can we meet Aho, the the guy who's in charge or whatever? Uh, he's probably like sitting down there somewhere talking to a family or something. Um, there's probably a few kids uh, kicking a ball back and forth with one of the the children uh, of Europa bots. Um, there may even be like kids like skateboarding i heard somebody mention skateboarding earlier um they do uh skating and stuff like that and there might even be some like learning music or something learning how to play an instrument or something from one of the uh one of the bots um yeah you guys approach aho looks up uh and sort of smiles uh and and he says uh how can i help you guys Well, uh, Europa sent us over, said that you might have some available lodgings for us. Uh, oh, he, he goes, yeah, let me just give me one second. And he pulls up his wrist and he sees like a uh, notification. He clicks on it. And he's like, okay, okay. looks like you've got uh, five. Okay. Um, yeah, we do have something available. Uh, it's quite a few floors up. Is that going to be a problem? Not at all. No. Great. Fine. Um, he says, just this way. And he, like, pauses for a second, turns back to the to the family he was talking to. And he says, I'll be back in just a little bit. You guys, give me a shout if you need anything. And he, like, holds up his wrist. And they nod. Um, and he's like, okay, the uh, uh, it's just this way. And he, like, leads you over to, like, an entrance, probably at the center under of the underneath of the building. And there's, like, a metallic door. Um, it's got a bunch of buttons on the right side of it. Uh, he leans over and like pushes a couple buttons, 
Uh, and he's like, you'll probably want to remember this. It's the code to get in. Uh, and he pushes the sequence again for you. Uh, and then the door slides open and you just see like a really small room, like five by five, six by six. And he gestures with his hand. Like, right this way. Oh, pay close attention to the code and follow him in. Yeah, you guys step in. Uh, glad to hear nobody goes, is this it? Is this our room? <laughs> glad to hear that. You're like, yeah, you're another number pad looking thing on the uh, on this right side of the door when you get inside. Pushes a couple buttons. Uh, this time it's a different code. And he's like, this one is for your dwelling. He tells you that. It's like, probably, it's like basically like a sequential, like five, four, four, three, or something like that. Um, okay. And uh, yeah. And Super the, secure. Yeah, yeah. And then the uh, <laughs> the doors close. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the elevator starts to lift. You feel the a lurch as the floor s- starts to move. Uh, maybe uh, your stomach gets left behind a little bit. I'm not sure if you guys might have been expecting it. Might have not. Maybe you've never been on an elevator before. I don't know. Um, Arca, it, is, should there be a roll to see how we respond to this? <laughs> I kind of, I kind of want to know how we respond to this. I uh, town or nostalgia. Yeah, I don't want to give you like a stress marker for it, but if you want, I'll take it. <laughs> you guys want the stress? I think, no. I think it's more personally like a, I like will. a like <gasps> kind of thing. Yeah, okay. Uh what is it? It's violence, unknown, and helplessness. What do you think it might be? Maybe unknown if no. we haven't seen it. Yeah. Unknown. Alright. I think it's probably relatively low. If you don't want to make the roll, you don't have to. Um because Bright Town probably been in an elevator before. Um <laughs> There's your DC. I don't think it'd be very hard. Uh, that's on the low end. No. Okay, you're fine. Uh, where am I? I'll make the roll anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> Yes. The white tower yeah. fails. <laughs> I will spend an influence point to try again. Maybe Dank like ah. maybe you like lose your footing or something. I'm claustrophobic. No. Wait, wait, you rolled a seven. No, you there. made it. You made it. Yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah, My so bad. I was like good. critical fail. Liz is yeah. good. One, two, three, four. That's we're just missing Jeb. You wanna make it, Jeb, or no? Yeah, oh finally. <laughs> He's like, yeah, sure, I'll make it, no problem. Here comes the fail. I can't dun, read dun, it, dun, but I'm pretty sure I'm not scared of elevators. What is dun, this? Dun, Just, dun, dun, are you is sure? This contested? Yeah, yeah. It, w- it would be yeah. a contested roll, yeah. What, what do I have to roll? Uh, well, this is... Seven or better. Yeah, well, so, easy. Yeah. Okay, there, you there you go. Here you go, you're fine. All right, so the, yeah, the elevator lurches a little bit. Uh, you guys are fine. Maybe it's different, but it just doesn't catch you that off guard. You thought this room was too small to be your quarters. Um, We're just going to have Narcissa be like, ooh, cozy or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And there's like one um, rusted metal panel that's just like hanging off the wall. Like it's it's not the ooh, best. Cozy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the best, but maybe it is cozy for you. Um, uh, yeah. And then it ra- raises for a while. Um, and then eventually it just comes to a stop. Uh, you're probably, I'd say, at least like 30 floors up or something. Pretty high. Um, and uh, yeah, when it opens up, you see just a, a, like a, a room. I don't have a uh, a screen ready for it, but I have an idea of what I'm going to use. But it's like an all-white room. Um, and you have like a, it's sort of like a common area. You have like a window where you can see out uh, to the city as soon as the elevator opens. I mean, it looks relatively nice. Um, and then in the center of the room, there's like a space where it goes like two steps down in a square. And there's like a bunch of couches and like seating spots. Um, there's also like a monitor on uh, one of the walls, like a very large monitor. Um, currently it's just like playing music or something um and so there's probably like some artsy music playing as you guys walk in 
Um, and you also see, like, off of this main room, there's, like, five other electronic doors, uh, each with their own, like, keypad next to it. Uh, and he's, Ooh. and he's, like, uh, the, uh, those are individual rooms. It's the same code as to get up here on the elevator for each room, but you can change it if you just, if you wanted to make it, like, for your own privacy. Just enter the code, uh, once, enter it a second time, and then you should be able to enter your new code if you want to change it. Uh, there's uh, lavatories attached to each room, and of course, like eating area, we have one downstairs. It's on the second floor. There's a main hall. Um, if you have food, you're welcome to bring your own food. Um, sometimes we do a little bit of a feast for everybody that wants to attend. Uh, and he says, uh, do you know how long you all be staying? Um... Hopefully a long time. <laughs> Unknown, really. Uh, yeah, he sort of uh, he sort of bows. Uh, and he says, well, it's always good to make new friends, to meet new people. Are you all refugees? Or what brings you to Nineveh, if I might ask? Kind of refugees, kind of travelers. A little column well, Mostly wandering, here. really. Just a bunch of wanderers. Seems like a pretty nice place to settle down, though. Yeah, he nods. Aye. Uh, he says, well, if you're welcome uh, to Europa, you are friends of mine. Um, just let me know if you have any questions. Some people get a little bit of uh, culture shock. Uh, just try not to let it get under your skin too much. Uh, if there is any advice you need, if you're looking for, I don't know, a particular good or something to do, uh, feel free to give me a shout. I'll, he like pulls up his wrist device. He's like, I'll put my uh, contact information. If you all want to f uh, find it, you should be able to pull it up. Okay. Oh, thank you. Yeah, he nods. And he says, um, I'm basically always in the building somewhere. So if you do need something, give me, just give me a call. Definitely appreciate it. Thanks again. Yeah, and he steps back in the elevator. You see him push some buttons, uh, and right before the door closes, he goes, oh, uh, just try not to destroy anything. <laughs> and the door cl closes and leaves. Are you okay? Uh, yeah, so you guys have, like, a, a, a little pad to yourself. Think like the, uh, I've got a picture of it. It's from one of the books, the place I'm thinking of. It's from Xanadu. Um, think of it, it looks kind of like the, uh, if you ever played Cyberpunk 2077, it looks kind of like the apartment in that. Um, but it's got Ooh. other uh, other rooms coming off of it. Um, let me see here. There's probably even like a hookah, like in the center of the room where that sort of like st <laughs> step down is. There's probably like a hookah <laughs> there and like a bunch of pillows for like if pe if you had people over that wanted to like sit on the floor or whatever. Um, there's probably like a lot of stuff like that. Let me see if I can find the thing, the actual picture. If I got time, I'll snip it and get it in today. I wasn't sure Shall we'd get we here. Each pick up a room real quick. Yeah, you guys can do that. I take the fattest rib off of the hookah. <laughs> yeah, yeah okay you can eat it on no it's just like not even lit he's just <laughs> hilarious he can go, there's, he's there's probably, just that dumb there's probably <laughs> there's, there's probably lighters like sitting neatly beside it um they're probably like similar to like a butane torch right so they like uh, Narcissa like, just like casually hides them when she like sees Jeb walking over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there's in the 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 bowl thing on top of the hookah that would have your like coals in it, or I forget how hookah is used. It's been yeah. so long. That's it's like fresh. It's all like it's all like freshly made, and there's probably like oh a, god. So it, it was like recently cleaned and changed out for the next guest or whatever. Um, Whoa! Wait. Too bad it's not on for Jeb. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could light it. You could, 
you could light it if you want. We, usually, oh my god! Usually <laughs> with hookah, you don't just take a quick uh, hit. Like no, uh, it's something you sit down and do for quite a while. Enjoy. Yeah, it, it, yeah. Bur- it burns like coals, so it burns for a long time, typically. Just, yeah. just Jeb starts sucking on it, and then fucking uh, Liz is like, "Oh my god, you dumbass!" And I, then she lights. You know, it. you need to light that first, right? I know how I to I him how to use it. <laughs> I already lit it for him. So he's sucking on it. Pettens <laughs> is taken out of context. Up the apartment. Okay, I, I found uh, I found the image I was thinking of. It's slightly different than what I described, I think, but the the same sort of idea applies. So I'll I'll try to get uh, I'll try to get that. Let's see if I can snip it while you guys are talking. Um, we uh, immediately stop talking. <laughs> might be dumb, but I'm not stupid. There you go. Yeah, Jeb. Okay, so you're going to take a fat rip off the hookah. Have you ever smoked <laughs> hookah before, Jeb? Yeah. You have? Wait, IRL or in-game? In-game. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. Okay. Trust me, I know how this works. I think. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. If I had to light it for you, no, you got it. Not. I got it. I got it. I got it. Thrust. Right. Sit down and have a smoke sesh. Seems <laughs> like. Narcissa has this look on her face that clearly says, "Enjoy this while you can." <laughs> While we're sitting down and poking each and other. smoking, I'm going to pull out the uh, rewritable metal slate thing. Yeah, go for it. Look around real quick, make sure there's not something like cameras or anything that be visually recording in this room or area. Make a perception kind of check or like a search kind of check. Cool. Or if you have like computer skills, I suppose that could apply. Can I help him? Uh, ah. Yeah, I'm re-rolling that one. You can help him. It'll give him an extra dice, or you can make your own roll. Up to you. Can I assist? Sure. Yeah. Same make thing. My... I'll make my own roll. Okay. Yeet! <laughs> that extra die fail. helped. Woo! <laughs> Alright, so... You uh, you look around, uh, Liz. You don't really see, notice anything out of the ordinary. Oh shit! I I rolled wrong. Hold on, I didn't add my one. Okay. Sorry. All right, you're fine. Uh, okay, so basically the gist of it is this: uh, there's no cameras in the room. Uh, with your successes, you do find like there's some spots where it looks like there may be a microphone. Um, and a, there's like one major microphone in the ceiling of this sort of main room uh, that you do find it's it's hard attached so you can't just like rip it out like by the wire or anything it's like part of the it's part of the ceiling like embedded into it uh, you could probably destroy it but it'd do some serious damage um, or you know you can not destroy it you could like turn up music or something really loud or whatever put it next to the thing I wonder if that's why you made the comment not to destroy anything. Yeah, probably. But that's why we got the thing. <laughs> All right, let me see if I can get this picture in the uh, game here. I've got it snipped. <laughs> God, I'm such a smart ass. Yeah. We all are. That's why we enjoy each other's company. <laughs> <laughs> I just put in the chat hashtag don't tell me how to live my life. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry y'all associate with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We're sorry, too. <laughs> First, thing... <laughs> First thing I'm going to do is write down on the slate that we're being listened to but not watched. And then just kind of pass it around. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> and this is where we tell now. Point out where the microphones are. Okay, thank you. We know how we 
<laughs> Acid Jack right off the bat. He's like, I don't understand. Hey, yo, what the fuck is that? Like, that's a cool what? drawing. What? That's a cool drawing. What does it mean? Uh, okay. More like, hey, you're probably a charade. Drawing. What is this? I'll play charades because I don't want to just say it. I like point at my ears, point at the ceiling, gesture around to all of us. Hang on a second here. Wonder how he's gonna interpret that. And what we're saying. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so I don't have time to pretty it up, but uh, this is the gist of what I got here. Oh, that looks dope. That it does. Something similar yeah. to this, right? So there's like a seating area. Your seating area is probably lower. It's got a it's got a hookah. It's got some couches around it. Oh, sweet. Do we have a window view? Yeah, you've got a window view to see the city. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. That is dope. It's a fairly big room too. It's like a it's like a multi-purpose common area. And there's also like a monitor on the wall in part of it. Uh. Okay. About high, how high up are we? Like 30, 30 floors. Yeah, like 30 floors. Dear God. So uh, we're, we're kind of trapped. Up. There's no escape outside of the elevator. <laughs> you probably hear Narcissa mumble something about a fire. <laughs> Please don't catch this building on fire. Yeah, not that would me. be me. I'm not an arsonist. I was, I was gonna make it. Building on fire. I was gonna make a joke like, "Yeah, this is where they put the refugees." So of course they didn't put fire escapes. So. Oof. Oh. <laughs> oh. Bad. Bad. So cut bad. that out. Cut that out. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, there probably is a safety system where you wouldn't necessarily need a fire escape. Maybe there's like foam or something. Trampolines it's... on the ground below. Yeah. Or, or like, like a, a you know, pole you slide down or something for emergency exits. Or like flying vehicles. That or sexy just, exits. The city like the <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I would like to think it's the slides at like the McDonald's play place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Generate static shock to run the rest of the city. <laughs> Gerblin, yes. Come with me and you'll be in a world of space social violations. <laughs> but yeah, I essentially uh, try to do charades to get Jeb to understand that we are being listened to. So we need to be careful what we say. I understand every single bit of this. Make a roll. Okay, so he gets the charade. Uh, no, we got to roll to see if he gets the charade. Yes! <laughs> yes! So um, you're going to roll, Dink, to see how well you perform the charades. And then I would like to spend memory points to automatically succeed in this. <laughs> okay, okay. You can do that. You can automatically understand as long as he succeeds. I mean, ah! it has to be decent. I won't I'm going to call I'm charades gonna... part of social What am I going to call this memory thing? Like charades deciphering or something? Nonverbal communication. Yeah, what's, oh, yeah. Your, what's your habitat again, Jeb? A dreamland. Okay, yeah, you should be okay. <laughs> yeah, he would be familiar with the concept Oh god, of all the dreamlands are going to have nonverbal communication. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. I have a, I have a symptom... Wait, uh, it doesn't stop you from making memories. It just stops okay. you from getting revelations. Okay. What's hey, I am a master of charade. Hey. He you get nonverbal communication, too. Sweet. Uh, it prevents me from writing positive memories related to either social, mental, or physical action types. <gasps> and I pick social. Oh. The depression. Oh. Yeah, so... <laughs> Yeah, so you have you can't create a memory on this. Then you have to roll. Right. Okay, but I did really good, so it's gonna be super easy to yeah. understand. I oh, will dude. I will lower like the unless he does like does like all three ones. 
Yeah, I'll I'll make it a really low DC if you want to like roll a contested roll. I'll just put a DC in my head. Um, Dank, just make sure you got a critical success rule of three. So you generate a memory. It goes on your page, and you get an extra plus one to whatever that was you were using, unless it was plus three already. Which it looks I'll like do it contested. Looks like it was plus three. Uh, six. There's a four in there. I'm gonna say it's good. So glad that four was up there. Uh, yep, yep. All right, all right. As he, like, at the last second finally gets it. You, you can just see that light <laughs> bulb going off. At the you last second, like, stops himself from saying, Oh, we're being listened to! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you you see, like, the question marks <laughs> pop up and then the light bulb moment. <laughs> all right, so the memory pretty much goes, uh,. I remember having to signal to my men in dangerous situations where auditory signals could expose the operation. Charades, hand signals, sign language, body language. All of these are needed in successful stealth missions. I dig it. Also, I'm glad there was that unknown thing that happened because I forget my uh, symptom is detached from the mundane. <laughs> That means unless I pay for it, there has to be a uh, 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 thing with the unknown every single session. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll try to make sure we work that in. Already did. I have, yeah, yeah. I we did. This, this the elevator. Yeah. <laughs> violence. Detached oh, God. Violence. You mean detached from calm? Yes. <laughs> I also have that. Yeah. yeah. Am I the oh, only boy. one who didn't get a symptom? I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm just like poor Cassidy yeah. got three symptoms first episode of the of this. <laughs> didn't want no, to experience it again. Just, no. I have crippling depression. <laughs> <laughs> I have crippling depression. <laughs> I'm just a fucking psycho, I guess. Yeah. I mean, she still I see is. Shadows. But... I have no regards <laughs> for life. It's okay. You'll fit in well here. Well, with this yeah. group. Of, with this group, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not anywhere else. That's fine, though. All right. So you guys have settled in. You smoke yourselves a little hookah. Uh, there's probably even like a, like some cooking stuff off to one side like a little mini fridge or something um and there might even be like drinks already in there uh that kind of stuff Ooh. um assuming you guys can uh can navigate to find your rooms most of the rooms are i mean they're they're decent large size beds you know they've got silk uh sheets and and nice uh, coverings on them uh pillows mm -hmm. with little tassels on them uh, everything looks fairly well. Like the the bedrooms aren't humongous. There's just like a, a decent sleeping area um, with like an attached uh, bathroom, basically. Um, what? Everybody what? gets their own bathroom. They do. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, and there's probably even like a sink in there. Hair freshener. Uh, a mirror. Um, maybe even some like. Uh, there might even be like some like hotel uh, soaps and style soaps and shampoos and even like little uh, trial makeup kits, uh, stuff like that. And on the trial makeup kits, if you flip them over, it's like, if you like this, buy more at whatever shop. And it gives you like an address for a shop in the city. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so what do you guys decide to do from here? Well, to take, check out the pavilion. Yes. I wanted to go check out the pavilion. All right. But first, I wanted to have this conversation via writing about <laughs> the thing that I discussed with Europa. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Why did it have to flip tail? <laughs> because you chose to give yourself this handicap. Right, yeah, that is a joke. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you were the one. You. you were the one who. You're was the like, one who oh, chose to run thing. with it. Yeah. Cousin, 
Listen, listen, I'm an enabler. If you tell me not to tell you to do something, I'm going to do the exact opposite, okay? <laughs> yeah, do those drugs. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Remember, kids, do drugs. Stay mm -hmm. out of school. Hey, Twitch is a joke. That is a joke. Do not... yeah. Twitch is a joke. Do not do, the... joke. do not do the dirgs. Um... Stay in school. School is good. College. Drink your milk. Yeah, drink, drink your milk. I mean, school's That's strong. School's strong, okay. Kid. School's okay. There's a lot of really successful people that didn't finish school, so. Hey, you know, it's uh, yeah, that drink out. your school, stay and sleep. Don't do milk and get eight hours of drugs. <laughs> there we go. All right. Fair enough. All right. So you guys want to head back out to the pavilion. Uh, that is fine. You can do that. So let's look back over here. So we've got our map. Uh, and you're heading from your apartment in the blocks. Back over to the pavilion, which is over this way, right over there. Do we run into the dreaded child while we're out? I mean, you probably see a bunch of them. Yeah, anytime you... No, do we run into the dreaded child? Oh, Arbalaya? <laughs> no, probably not Arbalaya. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think Arbalaya might be, uh, might be keeping track of you guys and avoiding you guys, actually. <laughs> Good. Probably a good idea. <laughs> I'll flip a coin whether or not to kick the shit out of him. <laughs> you heard what the guy said. Ripped clean off at the shoulder. <laughs> well, maybe I'll catch was... him up. It'll be fine. Maybe, maybe it was I Arbol... could just put him on my table. Maybe it was Arbolaya that baby. did that. We'll fix like him to... up. I could think that I... Arbolaya was just like, you're so boring. And he just rips it just the guys. like murders this man. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Kerblin, yes. It's just a flesh wound. It is What's but a flesh wound. It? Damn it. Rarely a scratch. It. It'll be okay. Only... We've got two doctors on the team. He'll be okay. Yeah. Here's some Tussin. Oh, is that... I just saw what you were posting. Is that the artwork for Narcissa? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I can't believe I just saw that. Uh, let me Neat. go ahead and save that. I'll get that ready for next session, okay? You don't have to change the token. Uh, okay. okay. All right. Well, I mean, I, I kind of would like to. Like, I like, I like that. Okay. Do it. Yeah. I'll get I it also right. have one with a uh, with um without the background that I can send you. That's cool. Whatever works for you. Okay. Uh, All right. Sure. All right. So you guys head out to the pavilion. So it does take a little while to walk over there. It took you a little while to walk here. Maybe, I mean, it's a pretty big city. Maybe it took you like an hour or so, maybe a little bit longer to walk out here. It'll probably take you about as long to get to the pavilion from here. Um, I do have a screen for the pavilion that I made. Uh, this? Something like this? Something sort of like this? Oh, so they've got a Space Australia version of the bean. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and so basically, like, is uh, the pavilion is essentially this really large, like, geometric uh, dome, um, and there's a lot of different entrances from the outside. There's crowds of people going in and out, um, and there might even be like some vendors and stuff outside of it too. Um, let's see. When you guys get there, uh, do you guys just go in the main entrance? Uh, and as you walk in, you probably see a couple things. Uh, the first thing is there's probably like some, uh, some people waving folks in to play a game. Uh, and then there's folks coming out a nearby door who like, some of them are kids and they're like super hyped. And they're like, Oh, that was so fun. We had so much fun playing the game. Dude, did you see where I shot the thing? I was like, bah, 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 bah. he's like mocking, shooting a gun. Um, and, uh, yeah, like they were playing Call of Duty or something. Um, <laughs> and yeah, they're just, the kids are having a good time. The, uh, the parents with them are pretty happy. Um, and you walk by another, uh, sort of entry way where there's like a, like a stage, uh, stage area set up. And inside the, uh, the stage area are all these like, 
uh, sort of like glass displays. Um, one of them is like a really large rectangle. It's like 10 to 15 feet long, but it's only like four, three, four feet high, maybe five. Um, and it's a few feet deep. And inside the uh, rectangle, you see this uh, long, uh, it's made out of like blue metal, bluish metal. Um, but it looks like oh, like a sculpture of a um, of a couch, um, and there's like pillows on it. Like it looks like perfectly crap. It looks like it would be soft if you laid on it, but you can tell that it's made out of like some kind of metallic material. Um, and even like uh, there's like probably like a blanket draped over one side of it. Uh, maybe even some of that uh, that weird sort of like yarn fabric that's got holes in it that's like laying over part of it. It's all this. It's all made out of this metal, right? And it's sitting in this display case. Um, and of course, there's a, uh, a woman nearby who's um, sort of like showing some of these different displays. There's there's a lot of them. There's probably quite a few of them. Some of them are different things too. Like you might not recognize things like um, like swords. Uh, there's probably one that looks like a like a samurai sword. Uh, maybe like a a uh, piece of uh, like uh, samurai styled armor. Uh, maybe one that looks like a combat helmet uh, for like a World War II soldier or something. Uh, there may have been one that looks sort of like a big one, looks sort of like a uh, like an automobile or a motorcycle. Um, yeah, so there's a bunch of these things. Uh, let's see here. Let me pull. Make sure I'm on the right page. I'm going to pull the... Uh, so the, the the person who's, like, sort of managing all this, showing different things to people, like, talking to people, and then they pause at one of the displays uh, is a uh, is a woman. Let me see if I can get her token on the screen. There we go. Whoops, I'm drawing. Uh, she looks something like this. Um, and so she's like over there talking to some of the other people who are coming in to look around. It's sort of set up like an art exhibit. So you have like all these things on display and like people are just walking around. They pause and look at them for a while. Um, man. And uh, she sees you all come in. She looks over at you like, hey, do you have any questions kind of thing? Do you guys say anything? Yeah. A lot of fine pieces of work you got here. Are any of them for sale? <laughs> She she chuckles at you. And she says, uh, "For sale? No, 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 no. I wouldn't sell these. These are priceless." Hmm. Uh, she pauses for a moment and she goes, um, "Why? What do you know of Bright Town?" Hank pulls out his bass guitar. The color, composition, material looks exactly like the couch. Yeah, her eyes light up. Um, yeah, and she, like, motions to, like, pull you to the side somewhere where you can talk in private. Okay. Yeah, so she's, like, she's giddy and, like, excited. She, like, grabs you by the wrist and, like, pulls you away from everybody. And she's, like, where did you, where did you get this? I've always had it. What do you, what do you mean you've always had it? You had to find it somewhere. <laughs> it came with me. Oh. She looks around, like, is anybody listening? She seems kind of satisfied. She goes, oh, you're a, you're a vagabond. Interesting. Do you have any more pieces like this? I don't know. Gestures to the machine gun currently strapped to his back. Wow. You know, there's really some very interesting research that could be done with these. I, uh, I have this theory. See, I'm working on something. We're really close. Okay. And I think that perhaps maybe very likely between you and me, if I could just locate a few more pieces I think we can find the location of Bright Town. Like, find out how to get there. I'm interested in this theory. Okay, it's just an idea. I... 
understand it's just a theory at this point. But I wouldn't be adverse to helping you out with that. I will need my couch back, though. She, she, she looks over at the... She goes, what? That couch? That's, that's yours. Do you not see the same material? Yeah, but that's like a hundred cycles old. I have been many places, seen many things, and time is immaterial to one such as myself. Huh. That is odd, isn't it? The strange life I lead. I, I gotta be honest with you, I don't know if I can just part with the priceless couch that's been in the city for longer than I've been alive. I'll have to ask my supervisor. Do you have any other bright towners trying to help you out with your research currently? Well, now that you mention it, there's a couple of people out there looking for some things. We've got rumors that there might be a few things hidden away in the Umbra. I wouldn't be adverse Not to there again. leaving some of my other artifacts with you after I've acquired more of them. Mm. You could hang on to them for me. But if I need them back, I'll have to be able to get them back. It's not easy to part with some of these things. Oh, believe me, I I know. What are you What are you going to do with it? If you don't mind me asking, like you can't exactly like carry it around with you everywhere, right? It's a big. I mean, gestures. Come here, I'll show you a thing. This is how you know it's my couch. Yeah, she nods. All right. So he goes over to where the couch is, reaches underneath on the framework, and pulls out four little caster wheels that look like they can be screwed onto the couch. <laughs> yes. Lifts up a corner of the couch, screws one of the wheels on. Okay. Well. Ah, oh, damn it. I mean, Narcissa go over to help. <sighs> Did that... you know that was there? Oh no, we I'm not just gonna... saw you. I, to be honest, I almost yelled, "Don't touch that!" I, uh, you know, it's a priceless piece of art. Um, art. It's a couch. It's for sitting on, laying on, sleeping on, experiencing life, family, community is so much more than a piece of art. It is part of a lifestyle. <laughs> like Dank is incredibly passionate about this couch. Oh my god. I fell in love on this couch. You could just see like a very confused look on Elizabeth's Narcissa face. was about to lean on it and then when he makes that comment you see like a look of disgust uh, in her like immediately like lift her arms away from it and like go back to dis. I said fell in love, I didn't say I made love on it. <laughs> That's you can't tell me you didn't do that as well. <laughs> no, this anonymous? particular couch. What does this even mean? I a likely story. She says, "Okay." So I you... feel so unclean. Yeah, she it's says, okay. I'm sure the cycles have cleaned it. She says, "Or it could have made it worse." Look, very you... possible. So you're you're going to share some of these relics with me if I let you take this now. That's the plan. I'll bring the couch back. But I'd like to have it back in my possession for a while. How long? About a month? Ah, crap. <laughs> Cycles. Oh. Like ha half a Six. cycle or so. Yeah, like, like about half a cycle. Maybe yeah, a she, she Maybe looks, sooner. 
She looks sort of uh, torn. Um, why don't you make a roll? See if you can convince her. Uh, we... gonna make a memory for this one actually. All right, you can do that. Uh, burn three memory points and auto success. Because it feels wrong to use social infiltration for this. This would be more like persuasion. Yeah. Um, Narcissa is going to lean over to Dis and just very sarcastically whisper, Inky's honor. <laughs> oh, definitely. I have no honor. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> uh... Let me know if, when you get the memory uh, finish. Um, so basically, yeah, you 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 have a flashback uh, that makes you succeed at this. Um, so she says, uh, "All right, um, well, I suppose I can, uh, well, keep my employer distracted um, for that long, perhaps." But uh, there's, you know, one thing you could do for me in exchange. See, I've spent a lot of time theorizing about these relics, trying to draw parallels. Do you have any idea where they come from? Where else? Well, I mean, their 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 origin. They're so oddly created. I've never seen anything like it. Do you know? The materials are strange, but the initial structure still remains the same. It's got to be somehow brought from Earth through another medium. I've had a couple of thoughts on this as well. She, yeah. Yeah, she looks confused. She goes, Earth? Earth? What's that? It's a planet. I'm sorry. I don't understand. Uh, do I see anything like spherical in the object she's got displayed? Yeah, there probably would be something like a basketball, maybe something that looks like a basketball. All right, we've got a basketball. Do we have like a tennis ball, golf ball, anything else that I can go with it? Uh, yeah, sure. There's probably like a basketball and we'll say a baseball. One of them is gold. The other one is like this copper material. Okay. I um, gesture at the objects. Do you mind? Yeah, yeah she nods. All right, so I pick up the basketball in one hand, the baseball in the other. And I slowly start, like, rotating the baseball around the basketball. All right, think about it this way. A planet is a large structure, spherical in nature, has its own gravity. Occasionally, they'll have things orbiting it, like, say... Kabadu. Yeah, Kabadu. But uh, not as bad, kind of like how it is here. You know, the planet will have things orbiting it, like uh, moons, satellites, asteroids, other things like that in nature. Like big chunks of rock and dirt and minerals and water in space. Okay, okay, I understood that last part, but moons, okay. satellites, uh, I know what Kabadu is, sort of, but you said this other term, gravity? What? What is that? It's what they call Kabadu on Earth. Earth. I believe Earth is what they refer to Bright Town as. Okay. Um, okay. It's not uh, It's not that big of a deal. Just, okay. So where in Nibiru is Earth? Not. It's outside of Nibiru. I have no idea what the hell they're talking about. She looks so confused. Nobody's ever been outside of Nibiru. What are you talking about? Where do you think the power that runs Nibiru comes from? The core. And what powers the core? Well, we don't know. Some... There's got to be some sort of source of energy that gets collected to power it. Or the initial spark. Where does the water here come from? Well, the water here, most of it comes from the pond, I think. And where did it come from to get to the pond? Well, you know what the pond is, right? It's this immense reservoir. Mm-hmm. But it had to have came from somewhere. 
where did all the metal that built Navira come from? Exactly. We don't know. But you see what we're saying. It had to come from somewhere. Or it was just always like this. Do you really believe that? So you're saying that the stuff that makes up all of Nibiru comes from Earth? I wouldn't necessarily say it comes from Earth. Man built Nibiru. She shakes her head. No, there's no way. Man couldn't have built Nibiru. It's far too complex. We can't even understand its functions. Uh, we barely know how to how to run power lines and 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 water between settlements. And I'm assuming a lot of the knowledge was lost or has been kept hidden for most of society. Think about it. People are complacent. You didn't even think there was an outside of Nibiru. What else are they hiding from you? Uh, she gives you a look like you're crazy. Like she's talking to a crazy person. You thought a couch was a piece of art and I'm the crazy one. Well, it is. Just look at it. It's marvelously crafted. <laughs> it is well crafted, yes, but it's for sitting on. Yes, yes, but it's just a, it's a depiction of the thing. It's not in the level of detail. It's perfect. Yes, craftsmen back on Earth made wondrous things. Things that you couldn't even comprehend or imagine. So, you're saying that there's... Can I put it another way? Please, help me understand. I have a beating heart, yes? Sorry, what was the question you cut out? You have a beating heart, yes? She nods. You have muscles that run your legs. She nods. You have lungs that breathe in and out. Okay. Yeah, like like the Taurus pushes air through Nibiru. Right? Right. Good example. But I can't see them. So how do I know that they're there? How do I understand how they work? Well, you'll take them apart. <laughs> he like playfully slaps this. A better analogy would be that you require food to continue functioning. But I'm saying just because I can't see that they're there doesn't mean that it's not. She nods. Okay, I understand. Your body doesn't generate its own food. It's gotten via outside sources. Yeah, she nods. You cannot create something from nothing. But how would something from outside Nibiru get to Nibiru? And if there was a way in and out or to another place why wouldn't anyone know about it that's the beautiful mystery everyone here is complacent with what they think they know why risk letting people know that there is an outside that there's more to existence than just here what if here is all that's left? Wouldn't that be a horrible, terrible truth? Mm. I think space is vast. Space? What are you talking about? <laughs> if I may, I don't know that we're going to quite get through to you at the moment. It's a it lot to process. Much more of a thing to like to look for other objects and see how they might affect your viewpoint. She nods. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think what you're, you're using a lot of terms that I don't understand. Where did you go to school? 
Asher, perhaps. <laughs> ah, sadly, we're all self-taught. Really? I went to a college <laughs> in a state called Missouri <laughs> in the city of St. Louis. I'm sorry, I've never heard of that place. I'm I sure you haven't. What we refer to as Earth is what you call Bright Town. It is a city with no with no ceiling, correct? That's right. She nods. That's what I've heard. Or some describe it as very high uh, blue ceilings. Um, but large open vaults. Uh, so large that you can't see the other end. There's uh, so much more to it than yet, but yeah, that's a simple analogy of it. And uh, a bright light uh, that cycles, uh, much like here, but uh, brighter, I suppose. Giant flaming ball of gas. Really? Slowly orbiting what you refer to as Bright Town, what I refer to as Earth, provides light to the planet. And at night, you see the moon. tiny ones from millions of light years away. That too, yeah. Stars. Countless of them. And it's beautiful. It's a lot to take in. I'm sure we could come back and have a further discussion on it yes. when you have more leisure time. Yes. Um, okay. Uh Look, you can take the couch. Um, can I schedule a time to follow up with you? Maybe we can have like an interview. I'll, 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 <laughs> I'll bring some equipment. We'll record it. Write some stuff down. I'm sure it can really help with my research. Of course. Maybe it'll make sense to somebody. We can only hope. Just promise me one thing. Okay. If you find Right Town. Don't just keep it to the Bright Towners. Don't? Make it open to all... Don't just keep it to the Bright Towners. Make it open to all the Vagabonds. Make it open to everyone. Yeah. There I are mean, places in Bright Town or Earth that take in refugees. Really? Mm-hmm. Maybe the Inky. <laughs> the Enki. They're involved with this? Maybe yeah. keep it from the Enki, is what she's suggesting. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like, well, from what I've heard, it seems like a really lovely place. I, I wouldn't want to keep anyone from it. Perhaps there's a lot of knowledge to be gained. So much. Who knows? Uh, okay. Well, I don't exactly, um, well, you know how it, to put the wheel things on, I suppose. So, I'll take it from here. Come yeah, on, Dank, I'll help you. She nods. She kind of, like, watches with awe. Um, she probably, like, goes around and, like, unlocks the glass panels and sort of gets them out of the way. And then just, like, watches in awe as you all, like, put the wheels on this couch and sort of, like, start to wheel it out. <laughs> We just like casually steal their couch. There's probably yeah, and there's probably like a few people who are like, whoa, what's going on? Uh and yeah, she's like explaining to some people, oh, they're just they're gonna take it the for a little while. They're gonna it's it'll be back. It's it's a very important piece, you know. They're just gonna do some restoration on it, do a couple scans, make sure that you know it, it Okay. Helps. Yeah, she's not telling them that you're keeping it or that it belongs to you or anything. She's trying to avoid that. She's she's smoothing it over with with people who were appreciating the piece or whatever, right? Right. Uh, yeah, okay. You got yourself a couch. Uh, Sweet 2D4 significance. All right, yeah. All it's right. going to be a long way back to your house with this couch. <laughs> Doesn't matter, man. It's got <laughs> wheels. <laughs> does it squeak? It does not. This couch is perfect. 
No, do the caster wheels squeak? I don't know. Do they? Does your couch stink? No. This couch is awesome. <laughs> There's a little bit of an indent on the far left side of it. Okay. Perfect mm -hmm. seat matches my butt print. Oh my god. <laughs> Are you going to be like Sheldon and be like, this is my spot? Yes. The, yes, it is also my couch. I will grant you the privilege of being able to sit on it. But only if you're nice to you. If they're Pretty nice much. to you. Yeah. Sweet. So uh, I spent three memory points and got four back. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Wait. So now you have your couch. I have my couch and all is right with the world again. A um, couple other things that you might see while you're in the building. Uh, there's, uh, let's see here. Uh, there's one person that's got like a painting area set up, very similar to the displays of Bright Town artifacts, um, but it's all like canvases. Uh, one thing you might notice is that some of them look like Vegas. Some of them will look like cities. Uh, from Earth. There might be a painting of, like, Paris with the Eiffel Tower. Um, there might be a painting of, like, Sears Tower in Chicago, Skyline. A lot of Skyline portrait landscapes, that kind of thing. There's also some that are very different. Um, there's some where uh, a tree stretches up into the sky endlessly and spirals out into, like, stars on its leaves. Um, there's one where, like, uh, a waterfall is... Uh, pouring water from the sky that's like flows out over the land and the water like rises above and turns into like buildings in different places like very like abstract looking paintings a realism yeah um and there's there might even be one that looks <laughs> like uh starry night you gotta get that one <laughs> um and uh there's also like some that look like a dread a dreaded dark castle, right? Like atop a, a, a horrifically cold mountain uh, castle made of like black stone and, and sharp uh, peaks. Uh, and there's fires along uh, its like walkways. Um, uh, there's one where it's like, it looks like the, uh, the upside down from uh, Stranger Things, basically all this uh, like darkness and ripped apart. Uh, ground and, and like flames and lava and places and like these deep foreboding shadows in the background that stretch up from the ground to the sky. Um, uh, One does not simply walk, walk into Mordor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's some of like volcanoes and uh, like fantasy landscapes. Um, there's probably even some that have like a uh, dragon flying in the sky. Um, things like that. Uh, yeah. Someone's been reading a few two fantasy novels. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, are these paintings like artifacts, or have people painted these? Um, they look like someone's painted them. Like they don't—they're not metallic at all. They look like actual paintings. Sweet. I'm gonna go buy the Van Gogh. <laughs> I right. don't think they're for sale. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Uh, Bing's gonna be the first of us to go broke. Uh, yeah, okay. So you go to offer to buy the uh, the Van Gogh. So, like, the person that's, like, running the place is in the middle of painting something uh, when you, like, walk in. Um, and there's not many people here, like, looking. Uh, like, there's probably, like, one or two people in here looking at one of them, but not, like, uh, in the Bright Towner Relics place. Uh, oh, she had to take out. Uh, all right, we'll wrap up after this scene. Sorry, Caitlin. Um, no, you're good. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, you walk up and you're like, hey, can I purchase uh, this painting? And she uh, she turns around and she says, sure, uh, that's an expensive one. It's quite a unique piece. Um, that one's going to be about 20,000 credits. Do you have that? And I purchase a replica. Um, I can pay you for time and materials. Uh, yeah, she 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 kind of nods and she says, "Well, I can get you a, a a recreation of it pretty easily. We can have one printed out. I would say within the next few minutes. Um, the replicas of this one are only about a hundred credits." Sweet. 
Um, yeah, she oh. goes, uh, she goes, um, here, we have, there's a printer in the main common area. You're just going to use this code, um, and it'll print it off. Don't worry about the materials. It's covered in the cost. Okay. Awesome. Um, transfer the credits and I go print it up. All right. Yeah. So we see How big it. of a printer are we talking here? Uh, it's probably, uh, I mean, it's probably relatively big. Like it's big enough to produce the uh, original size. Um, sweet. So I'm just like printing up a poster. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And it prints it off fast. Um, it's it prints it off really fast. It's probably like some kind of a laser printer, like beyond our current tech. You know, it prints it off probably in a couple seconds at most. Awesome. Um, yeah, you grab it. You can probably you can just carry it with you or set it on your couch or roll it up or whatever you need to do with that. I'm gonna roll it up. Ask if they've got uh, something I could stick the poster in. Uh, yeah, I'd be willing to pay extra for like a tube to put it in. Yeah, they'll sell you a tube for twenty credits or something. Cool. I drop 120 credits and get a poster of Starry Night. <laughs> there you go. You can put it up in your living quarters. I think that might be a good place to wrap it up. Um, you guys getting your stuff. And of course, like maybe we see you like wheeling the couch back towards uh, towards your place in the uh, in the blocks. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. All right. Well, thank you guys all for playing. Caitlin, sorry we pushed you right to the limit for your your cut off uh hope you have a great night um and everybody thanks for watching uh players thanks for being here as always great to play with you guys um what i'm trying to get in the habit to, of doing is sending a raid over to our friends uh at the institution so um i'm gonna try to do that uh, while i'm pulling that stuff up i just want to say thanks everybody for being here uh stuff on the schedule this week so uh, Unknown New Orleans is on off week this week. We do that every other Friday. Um, but uh, we will have Forest of Flesh on Monday. Uh, and Wolverine. that is now at 6 Central. So that's 7 Eastern, uh, 4 Pacific. If you want to catch that, it's D&D &D 5e. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and they're in the middle of a combat right now. So uh, that we sort of oh, left no. them on a bit of a cliffhanger uh, over there so let me see here uh, and then of course if you want to tune in for this next week uh same bat time same bat channel uh, we'll be back with some more broken next week well, let's see here i don't see anyone oh yeah we got neg negatrons online all right uh, so we see you guys over to Negatron last night. We're going to send you over there again tonight. Negatron's super cool guy. He plays a lot of retro games. He's playing Mega Man Legends 2 right now. Um, and, uh, he also does some cool, like, crafting stuff, right? Like, he made a cosplay replica of the Mega Man Zero, uh, helmet, uh, recently. Uh, it turned out really good. Uh, this guy can make some stuff with his hands. He is very good. And he's a cool guy. He's a nice guy. So. Uh, that's where I'm going to send you and make sure I'm, I'm still trying to get used to doing the raids correctly. There we go. So I'm going to be sending you guys over there. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. You all have a fantastic week. We'll see you next time. Bye. All right.